Hey guys, so I'm gonna show you a couple different ways that you can create um, your reliefs for your stamps. The way that I have my artboard set up right now is I have my master file up here, my master layer. This is just in case I screw up the artwork and I need to start over. I can just easily grab it, duplicate it, uh, the original one. So I keep that locked, keep it hidden. And then you'll also notice that down here I have two groups that are exactly the same. Uh, this is important uh, for one of the processes, not so much for the other ones, but we'll go over that. So if I expand this, you'll see that the fills on them, they're identical. Both black, both um, in the same order, both aligned with each other. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you how to do it with a, like a, a bleed on it using uh, your compound path, the actual silhouette of your shape, so that it looks a little bit cleaner. And then I'm gonna also show you how to do it with drawing simple basic shapes around your logos and uh, creating the relief that way. So first thing I'm gonna do is the mini guinico. I'm gonna actually, this top group right here, I'm going to hide for now and lock so that I don't accidentally alter that one. I need that for the final step. Uh, so again, I'm gonna grab the mini guinico. I'm gonna go to object, make sure it's all selected, compound path, and I'm gonna hit release. And what that does is that releases the compound path into the individual shapes that create the, um, the object itself. So if I click out of it, it's just a big black blob. But if I highlight it again and I switch it to where there's a stroke on it, it'll look vaguely familiar. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna select it all again you want to make sure that it's just on fill. Make sure that all the pieces for that logo are available or selected. Then you're going to go to Pathfinder and Unite. That's going to flatten everything down into one shape. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that path. I'm going to go to Object. I'm going to go to Path, Offset Path. And you can see where the original border is and then what the offset path is, right? That's how far the engraving is going to go out around the logo as it's um, doing its passes. So I set it to 0.2. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now this is important. This uh, original path that you have and the offset path, you can either just delete the inside one or you can select them both go back to Pathfinder, hit Unite so that they're one. See in outline mode, it's just this one. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the original group, bring everything back. So this Maniki Nico here, I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to highlight the, um, the uh, expanded path then I'm gonna go back to my Pathfinder and I'm gonna hit minus front. What that's gonna do is that's going to knock out the actual uh, logo from the background. So that is essentially what will be our stamp. And if you highlight it, you can see all the black, it's just a fill, it's a compound path. Um, it actually has pieces in it. We do need to make that a compound path. To do that, you just highlight the group, hit Command-8, and it turns it into a compound path. <clears throat> so this is the first way that you can create the relief for the stamp. The next one is for um, logos that are a little bit more complex, like let's say this one up here. What you can do, the main thing is just keep your layers organized so that you can see what's going on. But what we're gonna do on this one is we're just gonna draw basic shapes around it. So first I'm gonna take my ellipse. I'm gonna make sure that the logo is completely covered. So we have the woman, 
And then down here, we want to go ahead and make sure that that's also covered. So I'm just going to draw a rectangular box over it. Okay. And then those two shapes, I'm going to select them both. I'm going to go to Pathfinder and then Unite. That's going to make one shape for it. Now, personally, I'm a fan of kind of radius corners. So I'm going to select my corner radius button here and I'm just going to drag them in a little bit so it gives us a little bit of a smoother appearance. So after that's done, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the mini Kinigo. We're going to make sure that it's a fill. I'm going to get rid of these because we don't actually need them anymore. Um, I'm going to grab the original logo that was in our first group. I'm going to select the shape that I drew around it. I'm going to go to Pathfinder and minus front. It's given us the relief for this. Same thing for this one right here. This one would be very, very difficult to do like the Minikini go down here because there's so many little points that it would be very difficult at the end to cut around your stamp material to get it to look kind of uniform. So I'm just going to do a rectangle over this one. Okay, if I need to see where my, my boundary is, just to see if it's even on both sides, if I just change it to a stroke, I can see. I'm going to drag this up a little bit higher, nudge it to the side a little bit, and I think that looks acceptable. So again, I'm going to fill it, just a fill, no stroke or else it will cut on your Glowforge when you do it, which isn't a bad idea, but I prefer doing it by hand. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab the logo, the shape that I drew. I'm gonna go to Pathfinder, minus front, and there we go. We have the final boundary of uh, where the engraving will be for the stamp. And the white, like I said, the white is the relief. The black is what's going to be engraved away. Um, the final step for this, what you would do is just highlight it all, object, transform, reflect, oh, transform, reflect, and you want, you want it to engrave reverse because when you stamp, obviously you want it to be in reverse so that when you put it onto whatever material you're stamping onto, then it will display properly. So you do want to make sure that it's reversed. That's the number one thing that I've done that really like irritates me is that I'm like, oh shit, I forgot that, you know, I was supposed to reverse it. Um, I'm not going to do it on these only because right now I'm using Glowforge's beta premium feature and they do have that reverse feature in there. It saves a step. Uh, it should be free. It should be included. That's a good feature for us to just have in there, right? Shouldn't have to pay extra for it. But anyway. Um, if I just take this and then I file save, uh, save as SVG, I'm just going to save it here as stamps SVG. I'm going to use my artboards that way it doesn't pick up my master layer. Hit save. My decimal place, make sure it says three, which it does. Hit OK. I already have a file there named that, that's fine. I'm gonna replace it. Whatever. And that's it. <laughs>